I think Shogun might be the weirdest Famicom game. The gameplay itself is a bit strange, but the weirdness runs a lot deeper than that. Shogun is based on the novel by James Clavell. It was a very popular book in the 1970s that became an extremely popular TV miniseries. The book is loosely based on the life of William Adams, a European who arrived in Japan in the mid-16th century and was at least around for most of the Sengoku period. If that sounds familiar to you, it's because he's also the inspiration for the main character of the Neo video games. So this is a game based on a book that's all about relating Japanese history and culture through the eyes of a European. In fact, the label of the game is entirely English text. Kind of. It reads, Once upon a time, an era of Sengoku in Japan, all over country, was unified by the Shogun. Then we get into the question of who made this game. The title screen credits both Nippon Dexter and Virgin Games. And complicating things here, almost simultaneously as this game was released, Infocom released a graphical adventure based on the book as one of their very last games. As far as I can tell, this Shogun has nothing to do with Infocom's Shogun, and Virgin Games never released any Shogun game. What I believe is the case is that Virgin held the license to produce games based on Shogun outside of the US. Nippon Dexter sublicensed it from them and made a game for the MSX computer in Japan. Then Hecht licensed that game from Nippon Dexter and ported it themselves to the Famicom. But all of that is conjecture. Not to get too far ahead of myself, but this was an enormously unpopular game in Japan, and so there's very little information about it online. And that brings me to Hecht, or Hector. The name of the company is Hecht, and that's how they're commonly referred to as, but the label they use for their games is Hector. They are the Famicom Collector's worst enemy. The company was founded by the developer of Moero Pro Yaku, and they'll become one of the more prolific Famicom developers with 20 games under their belt. They're also known for having tiny print runs, most of their games not being things that most people would want to collect, and being enormously expensive on the aftermarket. At the time of this recording, I have about 110 Famicom games left to complete my collection. Hecht is by far the company that I'm missing the most games from. Okay, with all of that backstory out of the way, let's get to the game. And this game is a, um, uh... Okay, I don't know what genre to describe it as. I've seen a site describe this game as an RPG, but it really isn't. There's no character growth in it. I've also seen it called a strategy game, and that one seems even more off than RPG. Maybe it's a slightly askew adventure game? When you start the game, you may pick out any character in Japan. Japan having a population of 40 people. You could play as one of three daimyos, a bunch of samurai, farmers, or even women. For my character, I chose a woman because it's just such a rare thing in Famicom games. Your goal is to take over all of Japan, first by acquiring 20 followers, and then by locating three scrolls. Apparently, conquering Japan was much easier than I thought it was. All 40 characters wander around the game map freely. The status bar at the top of the screen shows the current date, your health, money, follower count, inventory, and what action you're taking. Pressing the A button will let you change that icon. When you select Take, it remains active as you walk around the screen, and whatever you walk over is added to your inventory. Food increases your health, while other items take up one of your slots. There are three different types of weapons, three different armor pieces, a prayer scroll, and a pass. You can only carry six items, though, so you might find yourself having to select drop and choosing to put one of those down. Selecting the heart will let you talk to anyone on the screen. It's also useful for finding out who they are. Each character has a unique sprite and color combination, but good luck remembering 40 of them. For almost all of the characters, you have to beat them in combat to recruit them. And almost all of them require that you give them something before they're willing to fight you. 
It could be money or a particular weapon. You really have to play the game with a guide open so that you know what you're doing. Once you've turned over the appropriate item, you get to fight. And all that happens is your two characters slam into each other over and over again. If you have three pieces of armor, you're effectively indestructible. So that's my recommendation. Collect the armor, hold on to those three, and then use the other slots to turn things over to other characters. Once you've recruited somebody, you can give them orders. They can go out to collect things for you, or they could act as bodyguards for other characters. The reason a character might need a bodyguard is that your followers will get attacked from time to time and get taken from you. The other commands are a map that lets you see where everyone is in Japan, and the option to save your game to the battery save. I found Shogun to be a really irritating game to play. You run around the map just trying to gather up resources, beat up people for no good reason to recruit them, and hopefully you're recruiting people faster than they're getting stolen away from you. It's not fun. And then there's things like some of the items appearing in spots you can't get to, or how slow it is to get around, and how much empty space there is in the game. Shogun is a game that wants to waste your time. Having 40 characters sounds like a lot, but there really isn't that much difference between them. The big question Shogun leaves me with is, why would anybody make this? The whole thing doesn't make any sense.